part of the HK. And what is he going to equal? Well, he is going to equal the gradient of f at x star dot the gradient of hk, oh, oops, k at x star. Yeah? But look what we just did. <laughs> this number is greater than or equal to zero. Now we made some progress. So in fact, let's vectorize this expression, right? So this is, uh, there's one of these expressions for each k so far, so let's uh, compactify a little bit. You know, erase our golden section search for now. I think we've uh, figured him out. Okay, and uh, in particular, uh, what does this tell us? This tells us that the Jacobian of H, now H is a, as a, as a function with more than one input and more than one output, right? so we're not going to separate out all the H k's. Right? The Jacobian of H at x star times the Jacobian of H at x star, again, but transposed. Right? That kind of looks like this sum. Yeah. Times mu star, now as a vector, that this thing is greater than or equal to zero as a vector. By the way, when I say this, what I mean is that every component of this vector is greater than or equal to zero. Yeah. So this is the, the nice compact version of this. Now here's the really slick thing that happens, and I'm going to let you kind of argue this at home because unfortunately we're a little low on time, but let's take a look at this matrix here. Can any of you guys give me two properties of this matrix? Whenever I ask for two properties of a matrix in 205, I basically want the same answer. Leonard, you're smiling. What's the answer? Yes, this is a symmetric positive definite matrix. It looks like A transpose A, or, you know, this thing is A. Yeah? Well, something that kind of cool happens, which is if I take a symmetric positive definite matrix and I apply its inverse to both sides of an inequality, it doesn't change the inequality. So in fact, this implies, and that's sort of an intuitive fact, right? This thing has all positive eigenvalues, so no signs flip in the process of inverting this thing. This implies that mu star is greater than or equal to zero. I'll let you check this at home because we're long time. But it's kind of reasonable. Well, I started out with a really yucky condition, right? That the dot product of two gradients of two different functions evaluated at an optimal point is greater than or equal to zero. And look what I just derived for you. Well, I just derived a very simple inequality condition on your dual variable mu. Yeah. By the way, when I talk about dual variables, I'm talking about the lambdas and the mu's. Which is a, that's language from, from optimization. Yeah? So in fact, it turns out that all, the, all these equalities, all these arrows point in both directions. And an equivalent uh, first-order condition to this kind of weird dot product being positive is simply to enforce that mu, mu j is greater than or equal to zero. And that concludes our proof of the first-order optimality conditions for a function. And this is a crowning result of optimization. It looks really yucky, but it's actually just what we proved. Yeah? So let's say that x star is a critical point of our function with respect to all of the constraints we've written down. Remember, g equals zero, and h is greater than or equal to zero. Yeah? Then x star has to satisfy four different things. Has to satisfy them all. If it doesn't satisfy one of them, it's not a critical one. The first is that it is a stationary point of this Lagrange multiplier function, just like before. But now we're gonna add the constraint two two constraints that we uh, that we derived, right? The first one being the product of mu and h is equal to zero. Right? That's one that zeroes out the uh, inactive constraints. And the second one being that mu is greater than or equal to zero, which is the one that says that it's a greater than or equal and not a less than or equal. Finally, we have the, the primal feasibility constraints are just a very feasible point. Yeah? These are the ones left over from our optimization. And it turns out, obviously, this wasn't a completely rigorous proof, but you can go back and make my proof rigorous. It's actually pretty easy to do that. And, and this is, this, these KKT conditions are, are, are a, a necessary and sufficient first order optimality condition for a function. So just like you can do Lagrange multipliers to minimize f such that g equals zero, now you can find KKT conditions to minimize f such that g equals zero and h is greater than or equal to zero. This is a really cool property. Right? Somehow we took this problem which looked a little bit weird, right? this inequality constraint, and we still are able to find nice first order optimality conditions. And in fact, if you look in the course notes, I do one or two examples of just computing these conditions and showing how you can use them to solve like 
sort of calculus style, you know, optimization problems. Like minimize the product of x and y such that, you know, it's on a circle. Yeah? Okay, so how much time do we have? We have two minutes. All right, you know what? We'll end there for today. So, so in our next lecture, we'll talk about algorithm. So, okay, so now we know what we're looking for, right? Just like before, we're looking for uh, critical points of an unconstrained optimization. Now we're going to look for things that satisfy the KKT conditions. It's humongously important. And so in our next lecture, we're going to talk about a couple different strategies for doing that. And then we're going to dive into the conjugate gradients algorithm. The big, crowning, really messy. You think bookkeeping here is bad? It's really bad for CG. So we're going to have to be very careful with that. Uh, and, and learn all about iterative methods for solving linear systems. So in the meantime, I think your TAs are going to grade the midterm next week. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you should get your grades for that soon. Don't despair. I know it was hard. It's fine. This course is on a curve. You're going to survive. It's good for you. Do study the midterm answers because you're likely to see these problems again. Just a hint. So anyway, with that, we'll, uh, we'll turn off the camera.